Hello and welcome to a new Let's Play series. My name is Tobel and we're going to be playing Kenshi Release 1.0. This is version 1.0.3. And it's out. It's finally out. It's been, gosh, it's been since 2013. This game has been in development. I'm so excited and I've uh, got about 500 hours on this bad boy on Steam. So it has been a long journey. I'm excited for the team to uh, finally have their day at release. And it's getting a lot of great reception just because the game is so dang big. There's so much you can do for with it. Um, there's so many ways to die horribly. So we're going to give it a shot. We're going to start with Rock Bottom. Uh, you basically start alone, unarmed, naked, hungry. And you're apparently missing an arm. So we're going to make this happen. I have changed some of the advanced options. I do have the hunger increased because I don't want to worry about food quite as much. Maybe I'll bring that closer to the normal, which is three. I've increased the production speed, uh, research, and building speed just a bit. Really, building speed doesn't matter too much. Um, but I don't want to be waiting along, especially when you're doing a Let's Play for too often, uh, if I'm waiting for a technology or something like that. So I'm going to boost it up just a bit. Uh, I think a lot of this happens to just be waiting around, so I don't think it's all that challenging. I am going to leave the chance of death global damage multiplayer alone, and I'm going to about double the number of default nests. So I want to have a lot more things out there that can kill me horribly. We also are going to leave Bandit Flute the player on, and we are going to have Easy Prospecting turned off. So, if you're unfamiliar with Kenshi, um, how do you even explain Kenshi? It's a, it's a squad-based or solo RPG or real-time strategy or city builder. I mean, there's so many things to do here in this game. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Um, we can make our way through this game as kind of a lone wanderer, just fighting people and getting stronger, or we can immediately try to... Uh, you know, fight everything out. So, I think I want to change that stance since I can't cross my arms anymore, right? <laughs> a little, little bit of lean to him. A little bit of lean. Alright, we'll just do a neutral stance here. So, my character will be starting with just one arm. Now, that's okay. There are ways around that. And you can, in fact, find yourself a prosthesis. So, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um... It just kind of mostly sucks. So we're here in the Great Desert. As promised, we are missing our left arm. We have absolutely nothing, and we're just a smidge hungry. Let's take a look at the map. So at least it starts you off with the locations of cities, right? That's not too, uh, too bad. Let's make our way over here to Shobatai. I think that's going to be the best option. Uh, I think that was this direction. Let's do it. Uh, what's around us right now? Do we have anything that's going to immediately kill us? Now, in the Great Desert... There are quite a few uh, random patrols of different factions. So if I pause the game over in the distance here, uh, there's a pack of starving vagrants. They're wandering around. I think I saw... Okay, there's a skimmer. This is kind of like some kind of desert bug uh, that does roam around up there. So we got to be careful about skimmers especially. At the start of the game, we are very, very, very slow. And I don't think we can outrun a skimmer. So I want to be careful about the skimmers that are out, but also uh, skimmers can bury themselves in the ground. So we got to be careful about that as well. There's a random uh, starving vagrant running through the desert. Hopefully he can't chase us. I'm trying to find... Um, I don't see any nests of skimmers that I could show you as an example of what they look like. But they, they kind of almost look like shiny silvery coins or, or flowers or grass in the ground. And there's normally like a patch of them. So you could see them uh, buried in the sand. So you definitely don't want to walk towards them. Much like you could awaken a pack of uh, starving you know, bone dogs or something like that. You really don't want to mess with them too much. What's that over there? That is a group of samurai. Which I think. Let me check my factions as well. Uh, we're only. Okay so we're, we're very neutral with everyone right now. We've not discovered any other factions. Uh, what do we name ourselves? Um. Faction name. What do we want to name our overall faction here? We're, we've got one arm, right? So it's going to be a road to recovery here. Um, oh, maybe something. Let's do something deep. Let's get let's get real deep in here. Let's do uh, let's do something like the unbroken, right? Right. We've lost an arm. That's okay. We're naked. We're alone. We're scared. We're tired. Oh God, we're about to get eaten by a bug. Um, but that's fine. We're unbroken. We are unbroken. I'm actually making my way directly towards this where I thought this squad was. Uh, this is going to aggro me any second now if he's not already. I can't imagine this is his normal speed. This is his... Oh, it is his normal run speed? 
Well, you are slow, so slow right now. Why are you slow? He's only running into 15. Uh, there's another skimmer that just popped out of the ground. I must have missed that. I'm going to find protection in the company of uh, some fellow survivors here. These are all uh, soldiers of the United Cities faction. So they don't hate us, you know, so we got that going for us, which is nice. And also, before I forget, I'm going to drop a quick save in here. However, I'm going to do my best not to ever do any kind of uh, save scumming. So I'm not going to die mid-episode and then reload the game. Uh, the only reason I'm going to keep a running save in the event that there is a bug and something winds up causing a crash or a unfortunate death due to some kind of weird glitch. Which, I, you know, to be fair, I play a lot of Kenshi. I don't think I've ever seen any major issues so uh, i think one time i had a raid hit my base and for some reason the raiders ran underneath the walls due to some uh, terrain issues i'm not an escaped slave oh god these are manhunters i thought these were freaking uh soldiers here the manhunter manhunter packs if they find you alone they oh god they're manhunters too um the uh manhunter packs will basically say hey you know what you sure do look like a slave so they'll basically enslave you uh, arrest us for what? We didn't do anything. All right, so I think they have some people who have crossbows, or no? Are they all melee? All right, they're all melee, so I think we should be able to get to the city safely. I hope it's safely. I mean, we're naked. They may not even like us here at Empire. I can't remember. I think Empire, one of the nations, has a rule that you can't be poor. You basically can't be destitute. So you got to be really careful about that. Um I should make it, and I don't know if this is going to cause us to get aggroed by the gate guards or not, or if, if they're going to. Now, here's the thing. when In Kenshi, the way people intercept you is that they run in front of your character. Ow. Uh, they run out in front of your character, and... Okay, so he said go on through, but he's not going to help us with this fight, which is really annoying. Um, they'll try to intercept you by running forward of you, because the game does not have any mechanic for attacking on the run. So they'll try, if you if you picture yourself running in a straight line, they're going to position themselves in that straight line, and then they start their attack animation. So what you can do is sometimes juke that at attack animation uh, to get outside of their range of hit. Uh, is it a bit cheesy? Absolutely. Am I going to use it? Absolutely. Uh, you can bet that I'm going to use whatever cheesiness I can that is a part of the game mechanic to survive. Man, are you going to chase me all through creation here? This sucks. This sucks. All right. Uh, I want to hook a right. Let's see if we can psych this dude out. Okay, good. Now, at some point, he's going to get tired of all this shenanigans and probably stop the pursuit. I think. I hope. I'm slightly irked that none of the guards are defending me, but to be fair, I guess the manhunters let the... Uh, or the guards let the manhunters do whatever they want. I will wait for him to get up, and then we'll turn around here like this. I hope the rest of his pack isn't coming, too. I'm going to be trapped in the city. I thought this had an exit on both ends, but it looks like it does not. All right. We need to... Uh, yeah, we need to get going here. We need to get out of this guy's reach because we need to start trying to loot and find people to uh, to get their items. I mean, hey, to be fair, holy crap, you are insanely fast. 29 run speed. I was going to say he's a ninja, but he literally is a ninja. Um... We need to start finding things to scavenge, right? We're basically, you know, picture any given apocalyptic movie you've ever seen. And there's always going to be that scene where, you know, they're running around. They're trying to scavenge everything because they're, I mean, it's a horrible apocalyptic world, right? So that's what we are. We have to be, uh, we have to be a bit of a scavenger in order to survive. We have to find uh, some things for us to uh, make our way throughout life. I got hit again. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, maybe, you know what I'm going to try to do? Is this the Manhunter pack? This is a slaver caravan. I don't really want to deal with them either. I might try to bring this guy to... I might try to bring this guy to the freaking uh, skimmers here to try to drop his aggro on the skimmer. Right here you go, skimmer. Look at this delicious meal right in front of you. It's me and him. Okay, that didn't work out. Oh, he kind of did. All right, so I'm I'm trying to get him to, to do, make his attack. So he's to get a little bit in front of me. Okay. Right there, right there, right there. Get on him, Skinner. Yes, yes, you are the best skimmer. I will never hunt your kind, at least for another like minute. Oh, maybe he'll even kill him, and I'll get his and I'll get his gear. Oh, that's where we're, this is gonna be ultimate karma. Oh god, now you're coming for me. That's fine. We're close enough to the city. 
we should be able to pull the guard to defend us, which it looks like that guy's coming out to do. What I'm going to do... Oh, boy, isn't this karma or what? This guy found some poor, starving guy in the desert and decided to try to take his gear, or take his gear, he had no gear, to take his life and make him a slave. Well, you know what, buddy? This is karma, right? Uh, what are you? Are you unconscious? Oh, what a pity. Look at all this wonderful gear that you bestowed upon me. I've just gone from rags to, well, not quite as many rags. So here's the interesting thing about being one-armed in Kenshi. You're missing uh, your arm, so you have this limb box now. Normally it's grayed out like this, but what this is telling you is that you have the option to put a prosthesis in this arm slot. Now, of course, we don't have access to that just yet, so we are still dealing with the fact that we're, we're one-armed. You have two weapon slots. The first weapon slot is for... Uh, no, I mean, you can put any sized weapon in either slot, right? But... You normally have to put big weapons, two-handed weapons, inside of slot one. Slot two is normally reserved for a smaller one-handed weapon. This is what your character will use if they wind up be uh, becoming injured or losing an arm, which we are. Okay. I This is a pack beast from the Trader's Guild that's dying. Now, it the icon turned red, which means that if anyone sees me take from this animal, it's going to be considered stealing. So I'm going to sneak and realize that, okay, I've got a blue eye, which means no one sees me, even though it's broad daylight. Please have a ton of stuff on you. Oh, happy days. All right, we are going to, I have a 100% chance to steal these items because I think the creature's dying. We're going to take some food. We're going to take some med packs. Okay, I might have gone a little crazy with the med packs. Uh, this should be enough food to last us a while. I'm going to trash these bad med packs and take the good ones. Sorry, first aid kits. So across the top. Um, what else do we want? Ooh, ration packs are better than the food cubes. Let's take the ration packs. And one food cube and one more first aid kit. I'll drop the food cube. These are some trade goods. Oh, here we go. A skeleton repair kit is worth, uh, for sale, 1,500 cats. Now, I'm looking at this box on the right side there. Look at the sell value, and it says 1,500 cats. The overall value is normally 1,800. Um, so it's, it's actually, uh, you know, we'd be selling it for less than it's worth. But that doesn't matter. 1,500, you know, cats to us is nothing. A cat, by the way, is their unit of measurement for uh, uh, currency in the game. We can also fit a couple of pieces of electronics in here. And I think that's going to be it for the moment. Now, here's the fun part. Um, I need to... I, I'm basically disguised as a manhunter. So the the problem is I don't know if that makes me... You know, if if the manhunters see me, I don't know if that winds up making them angry towards me because I'm I'm basically impersonating them or not. So we'll try to avoid any manhunter packs. Oh, they they actually show up as allied because we look like them. The little green icon there represents the fact that they think we are allied to them. That's hilarious. I wonder if they can see through that disguise. Oh, well, we're gonna find out. The other thing I have to be careful about is that I have stolen goods here. Um, although I guess it stolen good from no faction because it's not gear so this basically says it's been stolen from the manhunters but this says it's been stolen from no faction which means that it it considers these goods i guess free and clear so we'll try to sell these goods at the store here in uh mobatai shobatai okay we'll try to sell these at shobatai and uh see if we can get some money off that that might set us up for a decent start so what are you running to? Oh, you're just doing your little patrol thing. I'm walking slowly because I am incredibly um, over-encumbered. I, I, my character is very weak, uh, so he doesn't have the ability to, to basically move with a lot of gear on him. So I'm going to speed life up a bit. Now, I'm, I don't think I'm going to wear this armor long-term because it takes a long time for you to be able to wear armor and be effective. So I'm probably going to sell this at the nearest store. However... I do want to have it with me so I can make that sale. Okay, so this is a little... You can see the sign hanging off here. Uh, this is a weapon... Or this is a crossbow shop. Ooh, that might not be a bad idea to get. Maybe we'll maybe we'll trade in some of our goods and get ourselves a crossbow right off the bat. That will let us kite some uh, creatures and maybe just help out with some fights from far away but not put ourselves in great danger. Oh, I bet it requires two arms to use a crossbow, huh? That's depressing. Maybe we'll find ourselves a prosthetic arm dealer, too. That could be neat. All right, let's speed the game up just a bit. Come into the store here. 
Um, you can hold down the Alt key, by the way, to do a couple things. The first is that it highlights any signs. So you see how it, these signs are turning a bit yellow? I use this to help me pop the signs out, and so I can see where the signs are in a city. The other thing is holding down Alt, much like a game like um, Path of Exile, it shows you what loot is on the ground. Now, we could take all this, but we'd steal. it'd be stealing, so we don't want to do that. All right, my friend, uh, will you buy this good? Stolen from no... Okay, so the fencing chance is what we want to look at here. It says fencing chance 100%. means that this guy is going to buy this uh, for 100... Basically 100%. He'll, he will buy it. He has no qualms about buying this item. However, I think because it's stolen or maybe just because of the markdown on price, he's only offering us 765 cats, which is fine. Uh, that's more than, you know, we have had. Awesome. So now we've got... 6,500 cats. Now, can I sell you this? Okay, I can. 110 chance to sell this. Maybe he just really hates the Manhunters. We're going to sell this. We're going to sell the helmet. Um, I'm also going to sell the boots because the these types of boots, the plated long boots, they actually make your athletics worse. So that's what that, if you look at the um, skills under the right side there, it says athletic skill or athletics effect times 0.87. That means it makes your skill worse than it normally is okay all these crossbows we have to have two arms these all go in your two handed weapon slot so we're going to leave this for now um, let's see what else do we have here we've got an adventure trader here that's what this little guy I thought it was a backpack trader for the longest time but it's, it's kind of like this adventure trader they normally have things like um, sleeping bags backpacks things like that we'll take a look at this guy as well Let's see what he's got. I guess we have to figure out what we want to do with ourselves. Uh, he's got a bunch of backpacks. Hey, do you have an arm? Do you have an arm lying around? No? Oh, that's fair enough. Can't win them all. He's got a couple of maps. So if you, um, for example, if we, let's buy this cheap one here. Tech Hunter map, library map. If you right click on this map. So right now, this is what we know in the game. By the way, this is a Let's Play series. So as a fair warning right now. It, you know, at some point we're going to be discovering new things. So I, you know, spo a fair warning: if you're not interested in seeing anything explored, uh, you know, you probably don't want to be watching a let's play because we are going to go out into the world and explore things. So let's uh, right-click this library map, and what it did was it added a location to the map, and it tells you which locations are new by having a green rectangle around them. So there are some ruins here. Ruins have items in them of value that are kind of more than traditional stores would have and some things that are missing. I don't want to spoil that part. We'll get there when we get there. I kind of want a backpack, but I want a backpack that, yeah, these are really nice. The Thieves backpacks are really nice because they they don't encumber you and they don't reduce any of your skills. You see how the combat skills are all at one? That means they don't affect your skills at all, while a normal backpack would do so. Even the small backpack does that. I'll look at joining the Thieves Guild perhaps later on and getting a cheaper backpack, hopefully. But for the moment, I just wanted to sell those items. Uh, let's see. He doesn't have... Well, we could actually... Hang on. Let me go back in here. Um, I do want... I want a sleeping bag because if we have to recover out in the wild, we would need to place down... Right here is the build menu for the game. We'd have to put down a camp bed, which requires one sleeping bag. Uh, this will let us rest and recover health at 400 times or 400 percent of the normal rate of just standing still and recovering health oh that actually that being said i do need to medic myself so i'm going to shift click the medic button what that does is create a job for my character I i'm now a medic so anytime my character is standing still he will try to heal himself or others in his party uh, these are trade goods, so nothing really I see here of interest. I could, you know, become a trader, but it slows you down so much that, uh, number one, I would get bored. Number two, you would get bored. And number three, we would probably just die because we're so slow without any escort. Let's check out a couple more of these stores. speed everything up just a bit here to get from point A to point B. As we run around the game, uh, our athletic skill will start to increase, so we won't be as slow as this at all times. Uh, where is our athletics? Under stats? 
and athletics here. So it's already at five, which increases your run speed, your maximum run speed, different things like that. So I want some nice shoes. There are some shoes that give you a bonus to running that I'll try to find here in a bit. Okay, nothing too amazing here either, just a bunch of trade goods. Books are useful. I will tell you that books are used in order to do research. You need, if we go to the tech tree, for example, to research a small house, you need two books inside of your research bench. And we are going to get into research, and we are, of course, going to, to get into base building overall at a much later time. We're, we're definitely going to be spending, oh, uh, I don't know, at least a couple of good episodes. We have to find ourselves an arm, right? That's one objective. Uh, we need to we need to arm ourselves. <laughs> we need to possibly... Oh, uh, how nice. They've got a bunch of neat hats. Um, are there any that protect against dust storms? There are. 70% protection. A dust storm will make you um, have some negative ne negatives to your probably I think it's your speed and also your fighting so I'm I love that you can wear a basket for your uh, for a hat I, I mean a shimag is normally really good about protecting against a dust storm so 70% 70% I'm, I don't think I see anything that's better than 70% uh, protection and what I'm looking at there on the right side you see the word dust storms and it tells you that it's protecting you 70% from a dust storm. So let's grab one of these little rags here. Taggle must. Uh, pretty cheap. We'll grab that. That should give us a little bit of protection from a dust storm. And you can see when I come out here, it says dust storm. And what it is is it will give you some negatives. So, for example, the weather penalty on the attack side of the house here is we're losing three skill points to the weather. So we'll have just something to protect us. Now, not that I want to get into any fights anytime soon, honestly. Um, so I think this is about, about it in this town. There's not really a weapons dealer that I see. There is only the guy that sold the crossbow. Uh, there's that trader there. Okay, we've, we've kind of visited everyone, so I think we have to go. <laughs> we're forced to go back out into the wide world. Um, I will tell. I will do this because it's smarter to be uh, healed up completely. I'm going to show you real quick how we deal with damage. So the gray area here indicates that our, we have been wounded. Um, the yellow area indicates something that has been bandaged, like maybe from a cut. So this has been bandaged, but we actually have wounding here. This gray area is is basically like it's. I think it's more like bludgeoning damage. So we took like a, a, I think the guy actually attacked us with a club, right? So we, he basically bruised our ribs and ow and pain and things. So we need to recover. So I'm here in a bar. You can see most bars have some sort of upstairs area where they have beds. So if you click on the bed, you can see it has a healing bonus of times eight. So you'll heal eight times as quickly on a bed than you will just standing still. So I'm going to right click and I will um, pay a little bit for the bed rental. I'm going to speed up the game here, and I'll actually just go ahead and skip ahead to the point where I'm all healed up, and we are good to go. And that didn't take too long at all. We're back in full health status, apart from our missing arm. Uh, so we are going to... Yeah, you... Uh... <laughs> I love the physics. You're just going to do a little pirouette there. That's fine. The guards are uh, wonderful, wonderful guardians here. I will say that it's always fun to have uh, cities nearby because you can kite enemies. And I will tell you, this is a 100% legitimate strategy, right? If you're a scavenger in the world and you know there's a heavily uh, defended fortress around and you're getting chased by something absolutely horrible, aren't you going to run to it for protection, right? That makes all the sense in the world to me. Um, oh, hey, here's our friend. Um this is the guy that tried to basically make us his slave. He's actually in a recovery coma, so someone has patched him up. And so uh, he's knocked out, though. Boy, it must be real rough waking up naked, huh? Yeah. Yep. Sucks for you. Okay. I, I, I can't be too cruel because the karma will come back to bite me tenfold. So, and I will cover what the coma basically means in the recovery coma. I will definitely cover that in a later video when we have probably... A couple of more, um, in, a couple more squad members here, part of, you know, party members or faction members to mess with. So I'm going to speed the game up a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy because I really don't want to run, you know, headlong into uh, a bunch of skimmers at all. 
Okay, this looks like a trade caravan that got split up a bit, so they're trying to rejoin each other. Why does this look like it's something? I guess not. It's just a patch of dirt and uh, leaves. I am running... What my goal is right now, I'm actually trying to get out of the desert. So I'm trying to go in this general direction. I do know where the exit of the desert is. Of course, there's... Um, right here, this area all connects, which is fine. But trying to get through to more civilized areas, there's actually harder to get to. So we have to kind of pass through a little chokehold. So I'm running towards that, roughly. Uh, we're going to be running around really careful, looking for... Uh, I always, when I run around in the game, I always, always am basically just doing this. I'm always on the lookout. Uh, you can also hold your middle mouse button or hold the left control key, by the way, because my finger gets tired because I wind up moving my mouse around so much that it gets uh, it gets sore from, you know, all the scrolling. So I'm on the lookout for a couple things. One, I'm, I'm on the lookout for aggressive animals uh, like bone dogs here or the skimmers. The second thing is I'm on the lookout for other NPC groups because they often are areas of refuge uh, in the in the desert especially that you can run to to maybe have you know that pack of whatever's chasing you uh, peel off and attack them instead. Okay, so there's a camp up here. I think this is a slave camp. This is a stone camp, but normally those are there's slaves in there. Also, it is possible to become a slave in this game. I joked, you know, the, the, when I started out, I said that the character was chasing me, or the, uh, the guy that was chasing me trying to make me a slave. He literally could have knocked me unconscious and then made me his slave. And then you have to basically become an obedient slave to those people until you escape. I don't like how this is laid out there is it looks like there's a gap right between the middle of all of these animals i'm going to try to run through hopefully this guy doesn't try to make me a slave i don't think they're got enough people to do that uh okay so we're going to run close to the camp because there are guards here and i think these are empire no these are the the, the the slavers but they they will defend their area from enemy animals at any given time so we're going to hug this base uh, uh, stop chasing me. I think I think we're faster than skimmers, though. I want to say I'm not 100 percent sure on that. We just we just want to be careful, right? Because this is this is I'm treating this playthrough like a full on you know one death and we're done kind of a playthrough. So now the thing is, you can once you start having more characters, it becomes less important because you can lose your first character and then the faction still lives on because you have other. Uh, you have other players. You have other faction members. So maybe we should look at getting a second faction member just to for the uh, possible eventuality that our character dies. These are herbivores. It's a pack of Garu or Garu or whatever that happens to be. I'm not too worried about those guys. Who are you just walking along here by yourself? You're just Soto. You're just a drifter. Just walking along in the middle of the desert, no big deal. That's fine. I can't talk to him, so it's he's not recruitable, I don't believe. All right, uh, we're in a little bit more spread out area. Who are you? City Hero, you're part of the United Heroes League, okay. Uh, is that Nomads? Ooh. Nomads are an interesting group. I believe they uh, they they actually just spawned here, by the way. That's why they were in such a weird pack. Um, but nomads are neutral to you. They do have some camps spread around the map, and uh, they do walk in you know these huge groups here. I think you can actually trade with them at any given time. You can also trade with trade caravans if you see them around, and sometimes they have some interesting things as well. We'll talk to the guy in the lead here, or gal. You can see some skimmers coming to the caravan. Let's see if we can talk to them before the fight. You have animals for sale. Um, <laughs> uh, what do you have for animals? They've got uh, a bunch of pack beasts here. You can also uh, hire and buy animals in the game. You could, uh, this is basically the equivalent of, I don't know, uh, camel, cow? What are you looking at? Garu are pretty ugly looking things. It's like a weird dog mixed with some kind of pack animal. Um, they can carry quite a bit more than you normally can, so you're able to um, 
use them to trade, you know, move your goods. However, they are incredibly slow. You know what I kind of want to do, though? I kind of want a bone dog companion. Wouldn't that be cool? So we can have a female bone dog. She's just a pup. Um, she'll take a while to build up her stats, but bone dogs can become incredibly strong. Now, I don't know if this is the smart place to buy a bone dog, though, because we are in the middle of the desert, and we still have quite a ways to go. Uh, and it looks like there's an unpleasantness ahead of us. So maybe... I don't know. I kind of do like the idea of having... You know, we're out here in the desert alone. Um, who wouldn't want a companion, right? Especially a cute little pup. All right, we're going to get this dog. Um... All right, our bone dog. Uh, what is a good bone dog name? I've got nothing. Let's name. Uh, let's name her Diana, for the goddess of the hunt. And all right, so now we have Diana. So now you get to see the squad, how these you know these different um, characters interact within a squad. So I'm actually pressing the number one key twice to pop to my character. Or the number two key to pop over to Diana. So you can uh, control your squads by just, again, giving them clicks like normal. They are apparently a very well-behaved animal and can uh, respond to your commands. Uh, you can drag a box around them to select multiple at once. And uh, you can also press the tilde key to select all of them. Alright, so how are we doing on this fight? Uh, oh, the little tiny goats are getting attacked. Oh my god. Oh, please don't die. You're so, you're so cute. I want to, oh God, you're going to get wrecked. Oh, you're so brave. <laughs> oh, oh, I want to hire you. I want to buy you and keep you forever. Look at that. In one bite, it almost lost its entire left leg. Okay, so the nomads here look like they have won the day. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, skimmer bodies here starting to rot. I'm going to take some raw meat in case Diana is hungry. Now, we are, let's see, There's the that's the pack right there. The last time we looked out, we did see quite a few skimmers in the distance. So what I'm going to do, let me look at the map. Are we heading in the rough direction I want? We are. Um, I'm going to use this command. You can hold, right click, and follow. And I'm going to set our characters to follow the pack leader here. And I want our folks to walk with him because it's, you know, there's safety in numbers, right? So uh, we're going to do that. The other thing I'm going to point out real quick, and I think I'm going to end this episode here uh, pretty soon, is you notice here, if I just have both of these selected and I right-click the distance, Tobal is running faster than Diana because his athletics are higher than her athletics. And I think these creatures have a different run speed by default. So she can only run, she's a run speed of 8, I'm a run speed of 9. So I will be a little bit faster than my uh, compatriot here. You can tell your characters to run at the pace of the slowest person in your selected group by changing this icon here to this shadow one. And what this will do is it'll tell them, hey, I want you to run only at the pace of the slowest person. So this is perfect. This is a good way to have them stay together. Uh, the slower person will still continue to build up their athletic skill because they're still running at their full speed. Um, so, I think this is a good stopping point. Uh, we did cover quite a lot of uh, items on the first episode, and I'm so excited to still be alive and that that guy decided to try to make us a slave because we're a little bit richer, we're a little bit fuller, uh, we've got a companion, and uh, we're, we're kind of ready to face the world. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in right here, and I hope you do continue to join me for this next uh, Let's Play series with Kenshi 1.0.